How's it going guys? I'm Theo Joe, and it's about that time again for a new major version of Google Chrome. This time around, it's Chrome 84. Now, the last one I talked about was actually a couple versions ago because there was some delays. I think they skipped a version because of the whole coronavirus thing. But anyway, we're back at it, and this is Chrome 84. We're talking about all the biggest, most significant updates that are gonna be relevant to you that you'll probably notice. And a lot of these are mostly behind the scenes things, but you might still notice them now that you know about them, and they are pretty significant and I think you'll like these. And this update was just released and Chrome usually updates eventually automatically, but if you wanna make sure you get it right now, you can go to the little settings button, then go down to help, and then about Google Chrome, and then it will show you what version you have and automatically check for an update. And then you just have to restart and you'll have the new version. Now quickly, before we get into the features, I do have a sponsor for this video, myself, I'm the sponsor, and I have a new merch item, which is a mask, a subnet mask specifically. So obviously a lot of places at the moment are requiring masks and now you can flex your computer knowledge with this subnet mask which says 255255250 which is a typical subnet mask. Anyway, so this is basically a 100% polyester on the outside and 100% cotton on the inside. So you kind of have the two layers. I think there have been studies showing that cotton actually does a good job at uh, capturing certain particles. So you're kind of covered on both bases there. It's also made in the USA. I know that's important for a lot of people, including myself. So if you want to get this, I'll put the link in the description. It's on Teespring. It might even show up on that little merch shelf that YouTube has. But anyway, if you want to get it, you can check it out down there. But anyway, with all that out of the way, let's get into the biggest new features in Chrome 84. So the first new feature is Web OTP for Android, one-time password for Android. So this is specifically for the Android version of Chrome. And basically it will allow Chrome or web pages or web apps to automatically retrieve one-time passwords that have been sent to your phone via text message as long as that text message has some kind of identifying code at the beginning of it or in the text and then the app will be able to retrieve it put it into the form on the web automatically that way it'll save you a lot of time typically you probably know a lot of apps if they send you a text message you kind of have to go into the app switcher then go into the text message app go and copy it then paste it back and a lot of times there's like a time limit sometimes so this just saves you a lot of time this is already kind of a feature on iOS built in natively where basically anywhere on the iPhone, if you get a text message, it'll kind of automatically give you the option to paste it. But this is specifically just for Android and the web on Chrome. And it is using an API of some kind. So it's not like it's giving the web app or the website access to all your text messages to search through for the code. That's not it. It's going to require some kind of identifying code in the text message so that the Chrome will pass the message onto it and know that it's specifically for that site. So it's not like you have to worry about sites being able to steal anything from your text messages. All right, now the next feature is also for the mobile versions of Google Chrome, and it is the Wake Lock API. And basically it allows websites, web apps, to be able to prevent your phone screen from going to sleep or blacking out after you are supposedly idle and having not touched the phone screen a lot. And some examples they gave, which are pretty good, are like a cooking recipe web app or something like that, where you might open the web page and be looking at a recipe, and obviously you're cooking and stuff, you're not gonna be touching the phone screen and getting it all messed up, but you still wanna be able to look at the recipe without the phone going to sleep. This way the website can prevent that from happening. And another example they gave, I think there's some random ball game where you use the accelerometer in the phone to control the ball rolling around, something like that. And in that case, obviously you're not touching the screen to control anything. So normally the phone may think that you're just idle because you're not touching the screen. Meanwhile, you're controlling it by moving the phone. So that will be able to prevent the screen from going to sleep in that case too. All right, now this next feature is a security feature and I'm all for it. And it basically requires secure downloads on secure websites using HTTPS. So the reason for this is sometimes apparently, even if you have a website that has little lock, it has HTTPS, you think the website's encrypted, you may go to download a file, but then the actual download is from some other place on the server or something, and that's not actually encrypted. So you might think you're downloading it securely, but someone could intercept it. And this would be a very important on something like a bank website where you're downloading a bank statement, you would very much hope that your bank statement is also downloaded securely because then it completely defeats the purpose. All your important info is in that if that is being downloaded on an unsecured Wi-Fi hotspot, something like that. Now, this is not being 100% forced yet. Basically, Chrome is going to first start warning users that this is happening right now in Chrome 84 and then gonna be ramping up warnings through Chrome 87 and then apparently in Chrome 88, 
that's when they're actually gonna be blocking downloads that are not secure. And Chrome development specifically said, Chrome intends to eventually remove support for all insecure downloads as they present a threat to the privacy and security of users. And I believe what that means is remove support for unsecure downloads on secure pages. I highly doubt that they would remove all downloads that are not secure, though. I mean, it's very possible, but that would have to be pretty far in the future, I think. But at least they do say that in Chrome 88, that's when they plan to actually block downloads. And then you'd probably have to like manually click to select or something like that. But for now, it'll just tell you that this happened, but it won't block the download from actually happening. All right, next up, we have another security change. And basically Chrome 84 is gonna be completely removing support. It's deprecating support for the very outdated TLS 1.0 and 1.1 encryption protocol. So basically when you go to an encrypted website, I say HTTPS every time, but a lot of times it uses TLS in addition to SSL are the two possibilities there. And there have been several versions of TLS. I believe the most recent version is 1.3 and 1.0 and 1.1 are very old. They're considered insecure. They've been broken already. So any website still using it is completely outdated and insecure. So now if you go to a website that still uses one of those very old protocols, you'll literally get a full page block notification saying that this website is insecure and is using an outdated thing. And to give some context on just how old, TLS 1.2 was released in 2008. So yes, 12 years ago is when we got 1.2. So anything using anything earlier than that is definitely has no excuse. So you probably will not come across any web pages really that do use this very old version unless it's an ancient website that has not been supported in a long time or something that's so badly secured you might not want to use it at all anyway. All right, moving on. Another feature is Chrome is going to be automatically blocking abusive notifications and notification requests from certain websites. So as you probably know, Chrome gives you the ability to get notifications from websites. And in that case, every time maybe they post a new article or something, you'll get a Chrome notification. But a lot of websites are very annoying about this. They may even be abusive to the point of requiring you to enable notifications in order to see the website, and that is absolutely not allowed. So Chrome is gonna start just by default blocking these notifications and you'll see a top right corner, a little bell with a slash through it, which means that the website either tried to give you a notification or request that you enable notifications and it was just blocked. And I believe when I last talked about this in a previous video, they may have just been rolling this out in a partial capacity just to certain users, but now it seems like this is automatically by default. And apparently this specific feature is actually called the quieter notifications UI and the update log says that now sites with abusive requests or notifications will be automatically enrolled in the quieter notifications UI. So if you really want to on one of these sites, you can manually enable the notifications, but for the most part, I don't even know that if I've ever enabled notifications on any website. So I think this is just for the better. All right, next up, we have kind of multiple small improvements under one category, and this is more of a behind the scenes thing, and it's improvements to the web animations API. Basically, this is just giving a lot of new abilities to web developers to create different types of animations and visual elements that they can put on websites. And there was a huge long post that Google has made talking about the very technical aspects of all this. I'm not gonna pretend to understand most of it, but basically just means that that web pages might be able to add more functionality that looks a little bit nicer, and it's gonna be important for replacing something like Adobe Flash, which is no longer being used, is gonna be completely removed support at the end of the year. And in this post, they have a few different examples on some things that Chrome 84 and later can do that the Chrome 83 and earlier can't do. For example, in this one, you click the button and then it brings up this little animated box and then it fades in some text, whereas on 83, it just can't show the text at all. There's another demo where you click around in this area and it will cross fade the blocks to the new area, whereas if you go on Chrome 83, it can't fade, it just kind of moves to another area. There's also this cursor trail thing, which just doesn't work at all in Chrome 83. And the final demo we can show is this drop down menu. On Chrome 83, it just slides down, whereas on Chrome 84, it can do this bouncy type animation. So obviously these might not be the best examples you would actually want to see on a website. They're just examples that can be maybe implemented into tiny little things in the background of websites that might just make you subconsciously think the website 
website looks a little bit nicer and that sort of thing. All right, finally for new features, we have one that is a so-called origin trial, which means I believe that it's not enabled by default except for like a very small percentage of people where it's a test, although I think you can go into the Chrome flags menu and enable it by default if you want. And this new feature is called idle detection and it will basically allow websites to get information about whether or not the user is actually still at the computer typing stuff even if they're not on that specific web page. So the website will be able to determine how long this threshold is, I believe, up to a certain point. And the advantage of this is, you know there's plenty of websites out there, like bank websites, for example, that may say, oh, are you still there? Oh, if you don't activate this button in the next 30 seconds, we're gonna log you out, something like that. It's kind of annoying. Well, maybe now some of those websites won't have to do that because they'll be able to detect if you're active in another tab, and then it'll just keep you logged in. But if you're not at the actual computer at all and you're not using the keyboard or something like that, they'll actually know that you're not there at all and then they can just keep doing that. But again, this is just a very small rollout and probably not a lot of websites will implement it for a while, so it probably won't even be something you'll notice for a long time. So yeah, those are the biggest new features I talked about. If you guys want to keep watching, I think the last Chrome update I made was talking about Chrome 80. It's a few versions ago, but still you might not know about those features. You can just click on that right there. So thanks so much for watching guys and I'll see you in the next video.